A new NVIDIA Titan might be on the way. AMD is giving out stuff for free still, and they unfortunately can't beat the best themselves. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, July 24th, 2024. We're going to start off today with new details that are surfacing about the next generation RTX Titan or Titan AI, depending on who you listen to, which is going to be based on the Blackwell architecture. Reports are that this thing is in the works, just like the previous one was. That one was supposed to be called RTX Titan. Allegedly, this one might be called Titan AI. It is not quite clear, but many different leakers are coming out and saying that this thing is at least in some sort of testing phase very much like the Titan Ada was. We saw a lot of pictures of the heatsink for the Titan Ada, how it was quad slots, it was massive, allegedly supposed to take up to 600 watts, but it never saw the light of day even though it actually did make it into testing. That could potentially be happening with the Blackwell card. We have not seen a Titan card since Nvidia decided to come out with a 90 series, which feels like it's essentially replaced Titan, but it's it's always been a weird little situation that they've had with that, especially once they did come out with the Titan Volta. The RTX 2080 Ti didn't really have a Titan above that. We had the Titan V and then now it looks like the 3090 is supposed to be the Titan and the 4090 is supposed to be the Titan, but Nvidia could just as easily rename it. But those prosumer cards are in a weird space anyways with anybody who needs the redundancy and reliability of a Quadro is probably just gonna buy that. And anybody who's looking for the highest end gaming card can likely just stay with GeForce. Kind of the same thing that happened with high-end desktop chips on the CPU side of things. Threadripper went to workstation because that prosumer Area is a little weird and it does look like AMD is giving Threadripper another go when it comes to the prosumers but we'll see if that ends up lasting I don't know would you buy a Titan card if they came out with it for the 50 series let me know down below in the comments and Intel is trying to match in video when it comes to various different software offerings they've announced that they now have their AI playground application which allows you to take your arc GPU and use it to generate AI things in case you're interested in that some people say that it's easy to set up and to use it's very simple similar to what NVIDIA has released on their side, but you can test it out and see it for yourself in case you're on the ARC graphics. But in case you're on the Intel series of CPUs, the high-end ones, we talked yesterday about how Intel says that it's a weird microcode algorithm thing that's causing voltages to go very weirdly when it comes to the CPU and stability, and that's gonna be when they patch that out that should help to fix things. But a lot of people were saying, hey, Gamers Nexus reported that there were some hardware issues. There might be oxidation that's going on with the CPU, to which Intel did give a direct response to certain commenters about that, saying that there was an oxidation manufacturing issue that was present in some early Intel Core 13th gen desktop processors. However, the issue was root caused and addressed with manufacturing improvements in screens in 2023, and it seems like it was limited to 13th gen processors and should not be affecting the 14th gen at all. So while that was a problem, it doesn't appear to be causing this widespread issue that's being seen across everybody who has the CPUs. This is obviously something Intel still has to stay on top of, even though they announced that there's a microcode patch that's coming. I saw a tweet from somebody who is a head at Unreal saying that they're switching to 9950Xs as soon as they come out because the stability and reliability of Intel so far has been about 50% for them, and that's not anywhere near good enough for them to run their company. So we'll keep you updated with how everything's developing with the microcode patches for 13th and 14th gen while Reese updates you with deals so you can save money on your tech products for your PC build. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. It is Wednesday, my dudes, and we have some deals for you, starting off with this Logitech Brio 100 1080p webcam, which is currently going for $24.99, making it $15 off, and hey, it doesn't look like it's from the 90s, which is a big plus. But then we have this Red Dragon HL240 ARGB CPU liquid cooler with the Infinity Mirror effect for only $41.99, making it $18 off. And then lastly, the lovely Superflower Leader X3 ARGB 650 watt 80 plus gold fully modular power supply, which is going for $79.99 with included promo code, which is New Egg Plus only, but that brings it down to $80 off, which is half off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, 
I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, AMD's got a good deal for everybody in that they're releasing free software for you to be able to measure your frame latency. They're announcing frame latency meter through their GPU open program that allows you to see the millisecond latency when it comes to clicking your mouse button and its response on the display. This is something that could be helpful for display testers, esports professionals, anybody who's just interested to see how long it takes for their responses to actually be developed. The big deal here is that Nvidia sells a setup for it called LCAT, whereas now AMD is making it available to all GPUs, not just their own. I think I said LCAT, I meant LDAT, but now frame latency meter, part of the GPU open program. You can check it out for yourself in case you're interested. And we can check out some specs on the Intel Ultra 9 28.5K, the CPU-Z screenshots making the rounds. It's got everything that we've heard from leaks, but now in a nice little CPU-Z package. You'd see it's Arrow Lake. They uh, got rid of a bunch of different things, but you can kind of tell exactly what's going on. This thing's running at five gigahertz. There's not a whole lot of information in that screenshot that hasn't already been alluded to by previous rumors. 24 cores, 24 threads. They are dropping hyper-threading, it appears, and it looks like it is at least being tested. It's an engineering sample. Speaking of being tested, though, the nine 9900X getting tested a week before its retail release by an Italian YouTuber who appears to have gotten his hands on a retail sample of this CPU. I advise that you go check out Sati Tech and we'll have them linked in the video description so you can see their actual review. But the big deal about the 9900X is that it is not as good in gaming as the previous King, the 7800X 3D. There's a lot of different benchmarks that Sati Tech put the CPUs through. It seems like he just got his hands on the CPU CPU, so it's not a fully complete comprehensive hardware benchmarking test, but it's essentially what people are going to look at right now. 9900X versus 7800X 3D for gaming, and it looks like the 7800X 3D is the top dog in a lot of games or getting very close. In a lot of different applications, it can be up to 23% faster in gaming with the 9900X not really beating it in very much. And that's also coming at the cost of power draw. The 9900X drawing 107 watts in a game like Counter-Strike 2, whereas the 7800X 3D only needed 53 watts. So it looks like, at least before retail, this is looking like the 7800X 3D is probably going to be a very good chip for a lot of people to stay on until at least the 9000X 3D chips do come out. This is intriguing that somebody got their hands on it retail. This doesn't happen very often, but I can tell you when it does, it does bother a lot of reviewers who are part of like the embargo program because they're like, I have to wait. I have these numbers too, but you're getting all of the views because you didn't do it through the official means, which you know, YouTube's a game of getting views and I don't harbor any ill will to somebody who uh, got their hands on a retail chip. This happened, uh, I believe when the 2400G launched, uh, another YouTuber got their hands on that chip from Amazon. It got delivered a little bit early, so they had the first review, and this created the whole story of like, oh, you shouldn't be posting it because the embargo's not up, but they didn't sign anything. They're not in contract with AMD. That's not their fault that this actually happened. So it's intriguing to see a full video review of the 9900X up already. Kind of stinks for everybody who signed the embargo, but I'm not part of that crew. I haven't signed nothing for those CPUs. I'm not getting one besides when I purchase one for myself retail. And you guys can purchase my attention by typing comments down below. And so I'm gonna review what you said yesterday. Over on Floatplay, we got Kryptonite saying, sounds like it's time to go AMD and Linux in my next build. You're just talking about a Steam Deck. Just, just go get a Steam Deck. That's AMD and Linux combined into one nice, beautiful package. Then over on YouTube, we got Atomic Menace saying, missed opportunity to put the core issue. I'll leave that type of punnery to somebody who's a better at dad jokes than I am. I don't typically go with the, the puns when it comes to titling things, but let me know if you want me to. I won't, but I, I will hear your opinions on it for sure. And then we got server saying, Intel's microcode update will not address lasting damage to the silicon from the high voltage period. I absolutely agree, which is why I think one of the things Intel needs to be doing beyond saying we want to work with our customers or whatever passive language they happen to use, they need to be coming out and explicitly saying, if you have a processor that is faulty, we will replace it. That it should just be in no uncertain terms, all right? These CPUs could poten potentially be getting damaged by the voltage. That kills CPUs. That makes them unstable. If the microcode patch isn't going to patch it out, what am I supposed to do? 
at that point. Uh, trust that you're gonna resolve this even though it's taking you three months to get around to issuing the patch in the first place. I want clear communication that you're gonna address it by giving me a full replacement, which there were comments of people who said that Intel is offering that to them, which is good to hear, but I wanna hear it as a policy, right? That should be announced with the patch thing. If you are unsatisfied or your chip is actually unstable, we'll make it right. We will replace it. We will make sure you get everything that you need. That's what I would like to see here. And then Kaka no first saying, I'm not trying to be mean, but damn, at this point, you should buy AMD if you want high end CPU. I don't think that's mean. I think there's nothing mean about it. I think it's just the clear facts that Intel has created a situation where they lost trust with their customers because their CPUs weren't operating the way that they were supposed to. Intel didn't clearly communicate that they're going to take care of their customers. And then they also did the oopsie of businesses are also being affected by this and they're just gonna swap out their entire fleet of CPUs for what's gonna be coming out in, again, just a week. The 9,000 series Ryzen chips are just seven days away. And then Mass Car at saying, what I find a bit funny and unsettling about the CrowdStrike issue is that the TOS of CrowdStrike explicitly says that software is not allowed to run in critical infrastructure where failure means risks of lives. They explicitly state hospitals, airports, air traffic controls among the systems that are a big no-go, which I, I hear that and I, I kind of read a little bit more of what you said, but part of the issue is that like the things that failed weren't the things that were the critical infrastructure. So it's not necessarily that they violated TOS because putting it on your ticketing system, that's not gonna cause the planes to have any issues. Putting it on your hospital administration PCs wouldn't necessarily stop you from having access to patient charts as long as it's on certain aspects of it. If it was installed with 911 operators, that could obviously be a problem. Or if it was installed on flight computers and in actual aircraft, that would also be a problem. But that doesn't appear to be where the vast majority of these hiccups came in, it appears that it was at the like lowest level of critical infrastructure, not the things actually that we need to survive, but the things that allow us to access those things that created a problem. It's not good either way. It's just, it's a nice little distinction to see that, yeah, the, uh, if I have to get a printed paper ticket instead of you being able to do it electronically because you're using CrowdStrike, that doesn't necessarily fall under critical infrastructure, even if when it goes down, it causes hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people to lose a ton of time. And then we got QWERTY UI up saying, Brett annoyed about the color while people can't afford even the most basic variant. The, the ice variants of the B650s aren't that much more expensive. Like they're 200 bucks for a B650 motherboard. That is not outlandish. Uh, I mean, a, a cheap B650 would be in that 125 to 150. I wouldn't consider this high end. I think it's a middle of the road B650 to get a nice variant. But I think Danny Mitchell, I appreciate your, your sticking up for me saying it's a PC hardware channel. They cover PC hardware. Not sure what you're expecting here. I'm gonna talk about the PC hard. We talked about a Titan. I'm not having Titans in my system. I'm not having Threadrippers in my system, but I'm still gonna discuss it. Man, I, I want the option to have white PCB motherboards because I think it's good for the consumers who actually want to have a little variation. I also saw some comments of people being like, remember back when motherboards used to be red and green and tan and uh, before they were black? And I, I want that back as well. I don't care if it's cheap, just give me a green motherboard and I'd be able to, you know, color match it a little bit. Something that has unique flavor and variety. That's, that's really all I'm asking for. I've got a problem if you sell your ice variant as white one generation and then the next generation it's dark gray it's just it doesn't communicate the same thing i'm just a little has nothing to do with yeah 